Steve Lucas here from Toto, and you are checking in and digging BackstageAccess.com, where the real music begins. Hey, this is Chris with BackstageAccess.com, and we are happy to have with us today one of the most versatile guitarists ever, Toto Steve Lukather. Well, thank you, Steve, and welcome to BackstageAccess.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. How are you? I'm okay, man. It's been a really rough week, to be quite honest with you. We lost our brother Mike, and we're all just sort of in... Uh, you know what I mean? Oh, I understand. I, I would like to offer, um, on behalf of myself and the entire staff at BackstageAccess.com, our condolences on the passing of Mike. We we're saddened to hear the news, and I hope that everyone um, in the band and, and everyone who knew him is coping the best that they can. We're trying. You know, you know, we, we, you know it's coming, but at the same time, it's just, there's, a, there's a hole in your heart where he's being... Two brothers from the same family, it just seems so impossible to get behind. But, you know, here we are. Here we sit. We got new music. We got a tour going, you know, and, uh, what can I say? We got to keep moving forward. Right. So let's let's talk about the new Toto album, Toto 14. Now, this is the first studio album since 2006. So what made now... It's been 10 years, it's been 10 years since we wrote a record, so, uh, having come full fruition of this, it's, uh... It's, just, it's crazy, really. You wonder where the time goes. We never thought we'd do this again. It was born somewhat out of litigation. We didn't realize we owed somebody a record if we wanted to put a DVD out. So, you know, the, the live in Poland record went number one all over the world, and, you know, so I'm glad we did that. But at the same time, we went, gosh, do we really have to make a studio album? I mean, we hadn't planned on that. This was, we came back together again just really to help Mikey and his family with bills and all the rest of it, and, sure. and also take care of ourselves at the same time. We all have families and stuff to take care of, but the idea was to help him primarily. So. Right. Uh, and we did that. We had so much fun coming back together again that we decided to do it again. And then it just sort of morphed into five years later where we have a new album out and we're a new world tour for the next two years and there's a new lease on life for us. So sure. we never saw it coming. Perhaps maybe that's why we're enjoying the success and the nice reviews and people digging the music, you know, because we just were sort of like, we didn't plan on doing this, but something drew us back together. Something that draws us back together. We've been lifelong childhood friends, but that was always there, but just actually being Toto Incorporated, the business. Right. Uh, it's, a, you know, now that we're back into it, older and wiser and clear-headed and <laughs> maybe motivated uh, in despite of all the losses and tragedies that's been around us and other drama and litigation and other crap that we have to deal with. Here we sit. Now what, like, uh, ready, ready to go and getting excited about the future. Now, what was the writing and recording process like for this album? Well, I mean, you know, it happened a lot of different ways. I mean, we wrote, we wrote music specifically for this record with the exception of one song, which is an old song called Chinatown, which has been around this actually right before Toto's first album that was David had this piece of music that he never finished okay and we, and we found this little jam I said you gotta finish this this is classic page man you know, we gotta cut this song so people eat it up you know nobody plays music like this anymore <laughs> so we cut that and that was really fun and everybody brought pieces and things and we got together and wrote together the band so Joseph had the song Fortune which was the first thing we cut because it was a finished song and then we had to have a Steve Pecan song it wouldn't make sense to have him back in the album without singing and one of his own songs so that was that and then the rest of it we just kind of various configurations wrote and recorded the record over the period of 10 months okay now you mentioned the song Chinatown which happens to be my personal favorite from the album and um your music in general, Toto's music, but this song struck me in particular, just incorporating so many different types of music and elements. How does a song like that in particular come together in the studio? You know, there's so many well, musicians. Kind of like, here's what happened. Like, the, there's three lead singers on that song. I right. mean, it's very hard for three males to sing a lead on a song. <laughs> First off, it's not about a girl, so we're off the hook there. <laughs> 
and it's not about men, so we're off the hook there. <laughs> uh, and no, I mean, whatever you're into, I don't care. But the, the point is, it's not a love song, so we're able to, like, almost write it lyrically speaking, because that was really the main thing that needed to rewrite. But lyrically speaking, how, almost like an operetta, like the three different points of view from three guys living in the same town from three different points of view, the dark, seedy part of Chinatown, you know, the underbelly of it all. And uh, so, you know, it was, a, it was sort of a fantasy written song where you have David Page starting out, then Joseph does the answer, and then I sing the, you know, the the chorus part. Uh, we all sing the chorus together, but then I sing the third B section, the other B section, if you will. So I started, we were all sitting around the room with headphones on with one microphone going, well, we should sing this, okay, why don't you sing this part? And then CJ, I think, just says, well, you guys all need to sing this song. <laughs> There's no reason why you can't do this. Right. Because, like, look, look, you sound great in this part, but you don't sound as good on the other part. You don't have the voice, the high voice to do here. So that's a Joseph thing, that. And then Dave should be the narrator. So that's how that was born. We just sat in a room with one microphone. Like, we weren't walking inside and outside into a control room into a ISO booth or something like that. It was really done in CJ's treehouse studio, sitting there you know, with headphones all over the walls. It was very much a, a less slick environment to work in. It was more of a homey vibe. He created this homey vibe for us. <laughs> we just sat in the room and recorded like that on all the records. I, mean, I have a guitar part. Let me put this up right here. Or let me put, you know, I play, I play bass on some of these things just by accident because it was like, oh, let me get this placeholder on this. And the people ended up digging what I played, so we kept it. Cool. So it's like a bunch of, if, like, if we were 15 years old, that's what we'd be doing. Right. <laughs> but we're not. We're just, but we did it with that, it, conceptually like that. Now, a lot of you, you know, most of you guys have been working together for oh, the better part of, what, four decades now? And well, we went to high school here. I've known Joseph, Steve, and, and the Bacaro brothers, and uh, David Page since I was 15 years old. So that would be 43 years. <laughs> so is it easier working in an environment where everybody knows everyone else so well and kind of play things off each other? Yes and no. We know each other so well that it's harder to impress each other. And it's also uh, because we've known each other, we're so comfortable. We can fight like brothers do. Right. <laughs> we, argue over, we argue over things, and, uh, you know, some of that tension makes for better music, some of it was just tense, you know? Right. Uh, that's why we needed CJ in there to help us, keep us from killing each other, and also just to, you know, keep the ball moving and keep us from overdoing and overthinking things, or, or for the very reason, like, why don't we do Chinatown like that? That could have been one guy singing that stuff. Right. That would have never happened if we didn't have CJ in the room going, why don't you all try this? You know, why can't you do that? Sure. It's, it's stuff like that that we wouldn't have necessarily made those choices left to our own devices that we needed a co-producer for. So he has been worth his weight in gold for that. And we let him run the ball. We, no, we let him be the tiebreaker, you know? Absolutely not. You know, but we needed that extra, you know, that third objective here. Sure. Now, Toto's going to be embarking on a pretty big world tour coming up. Uh, can you give us some of the details, particular when you expect the band to hit the States here? Well, the States starts on August 7th through about September 12th. Okay. And we're very excited. I can't say too much yet, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> we're going on, we're going on, it's, it's going to be a, a cool tour. Uh, we're going out with a, a a band, we're going to co-build with a band of ours, of, of, of heroes of ours. And it's okay. not the obvious call. This is not the obvious call. It's none of the bands you would think that we'd be going on the road with. So that's why we jumped at this chance. Plus, we both get to play 90 Minutes, and it's going to be fun, big rooms. Uh, so we're excited about that. That's going to be a reality. You'll hear about that the next week and a half. I can't say, but uh, okay. I'm very excited. Okay, so it'll be a we're, big... We are hitting the road. We will be, a, you know, uh, in you know East Coast, West Coast, a little bit of Midwest, a little bit of uh, Texas. Yeah, you know, we're going to see how this goes. Then we're going to come back in 2016 and do a bunch more. We're really kind of rebuilding the U.S. and it's actually for the first time we're getting the bite that we wanted that we've always been hoping for to catch up with our, our success overseas, which we're doing on our own. And that starts uh, actually in May, and we're getting all that together again. Now we got you know David Hungate, our original bass players, come back. Lenny Castro's on the road with us. who's worked on all our records, but has been on the road with us in the '80s. Steve, Joe, Dave, and me. I mean, is it really? It's, it's Fun. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to hearing that uh, big announcement about the U.S. tours as soon as that breaks. Absolutely. <clears throat> Within a week and a half, two 
two weeks tops. Okay, great. Now, Steve, you've also done a lot of stuff. You're going to go, you're going to laugh. You're going to go, oh, wow, well, that's not what I expected. That's pretty cool. That's going to be a big surprise. Uh, yeah, well, it's going to be, you're going to go, wow, that's interesting. That's what you'll say. So that's cool. I wouldn't have thought of that, but that's going to work. Well, that, that, that'll that be make for a great tour because you'll have two bands that people think would never tour together out there on the road. It'll yeah, make people. That's, well, that's the idea. One plus one equals three instead of two. Exactly, know? exactly. But everybody wins, you know? Sure. Plus, it's like childhood, childhood hero time, so. Okay, so you, you, you had to do it anyway, no matter yeah. what. <laughs> hey, we're coming on the road, so that's the good news. Now, any plans for uh, another solo record in the future? Oh, God, man, you're just asking a guy who just gave birth to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you do uh, give you know, birth, they ask you. <laughs> I would say that. That I could say eventually will happen. Okay. If you're going to ask me about a total record, I have to go, well, let me see, how old will I be in 10 years? <laughs> Now you've also we, 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 we love the record we worked hard on it but I don't know if anybody's gonna be jumping back in to do this again soon. It was very uh, arduous pro process to say the least. Sure, understood. Now you've also recorded with a lot of different artists over the years. Um, what were some of your favorite sessions? Were there a few that maybe stood out in memory? Oh man, you know, I mean, I got to work with so many of my heroes. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, the one that comes to mind, the most famous one, is probably Thriller. You know, we worked on that record. That's where I met Paul McCartney, and that's how that morphed into the whole Beatles connection right. that I've been living. Uh, because I've been in Ringo's band for three years. I'm loving that. I've worked on his new record, got to write with him and record with him as well. I've been on the road for three years with that great band. And I'm getting to go do that again in October. But in the meantime, you know, I just get to do so much stuff, you know? I mean, I, you have to look at discography. I mean, there's a lot of interesting, cool stuff in there that I've had a chance to do, you know, working with some of the great players and singers and songwriters over the last 40 years. So, I don't know, it's hard for me to pick out. I have to start looking at a list, and I hate looking at a list. <laughs> Now, um, I'm actually, you know, I, I stopped doing sessions like 25 years ago as far as day to day. Who am I playing? Every once in a while, I'll do a guest spot here and right. there, but nothing. But you know, the days of sessions, quote unquote, I mean, that died a long time ago. But sadly, it was some of the greatest times of my life. I didn't know I was working every day. I had no idea what I was going to be doing. Pretty much, all of a sudden, I get these calls from amazing artists to Aretha Franklin during the daytime and Alice Cooper at night. I mean, not a lot of people can put on those hats and chains like that, but to me, it was just normal. And I loved it. I loved all the different kinds of music I got to play with all these incredible, legendary artists. And and that ties into what I was going to ask you next, is that, you know, you're so much more than a one-genre player. Um, you know, you're, you're talented across the board, and you've done so many different projects with so many different people. Um, but guitar-wise, who would be your biggest influence on the rock side, and then who would be your biggest influence on the jazz side? Oh, that's a broad stroke. Um, you know, I started out my first guitar hero was George Harrison. Okay. You know, that was a, that was the on switch to my life. The Beatles and George Harrison. I want to play the solo. I saw her standing there. That was the one that I went. I, I, who makes that noise? I want to do that. I want to be that guy. Uh, and then everything that came after it. You know, Jimi Hendrix, Clapton, Beck Page, all that. You know, Dave Gilmore, and then Steve Howe, and all the prog rock guys. You know, Steve Hackett, and then McLaughlin, Al Demiola. And then, of course, brother Eddie Van Halen hit the scene, and that turned it upside down. And he's been a dear friend of mine for, damn, 30, 38 years, or something like that, 37 years. Uh, you know, and then everybody that's come after that, you know, those are the rock guys. You know, I love friends with all of them. Satriani, Bye, you know. Uh, the people that, you know, the stylists that changed everything, you know. Absolutely. Came into it with a different way. The guys, you know, Alan Holdsworth, you know, who kind of crosses over to both sides. Then you got Larry Carlson, who plays jazz with a rock sound, and that really touched me. You know, on Written Hour and all the studio guys, Jay Graydon. Got to play with Ray Parker Jr. a lot. What a great rhythm guitar player he is. Cool. Um, we, you know, we did a lot of fun stuff together. I mean, I got to work with so many of my guitar heroes, you know. I got to do a record with Jeff Beck that never came out, sadly, but... Um, you know, I've got a chance to play with so many great people over the years in so many different genres and styles. That I have to catch myself. I've got to play with Brian May. I mean, you know, it's just crazy to do something that they told me when I was a kid, you know? Right. Joe Walsh, you know, people like that, you know, people that are heroes of mine that are now friends, you know? Now, in many cases, you know. You've been in, in the music business for so long now, and you've had, you know, your successes with Toto and without. What do you think's the key to your longevity in the industry? I mean, it's the 
is my ability to morph into whatever situation, whatever style of music, whatever you want me to do, I'm here to do, you know, I mean, I can play, I mean, Ringo's band is a perfect example, I mean, I got to do everything from Carl Perkins to George Harrison to everybody's individual hit songs in their own style, plus my own stuff, plus, you know, I get, you know, oh, you want me to, you need a pedal steel here? I'll figure out how to do that. So I figured out a way to make my guitar sound like a pedal steel. You know, I just can do these things. But to me, it's, I, I like the challenge of it. I like to do different things. You know, it's the old uh, story. I mean, like, you know, I like ice cream, but I wouldn't want to eat ice cream at every meal. Absolutely. So, I mean, variety, you, you grow by being put in situations that maybe you're not that comfortable in. And you got to rise to the occasion. Now, some people fall apart like Alice and Cars under pressure like that. For me, that's when, I, that's when I step out of the ether and go, yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, motherfucker. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, like, you know, I'm not scared of it because I've been doing it for almost 40 years. Right, right, absolutely. I love that stuff. And, I, and the players that I looked up to and the people that I learned from all could do that. Like, I'm working with Quincy Jones playing R&B parts, and then I'm playing with Cheap Trick at night, you know. Right. So, like, you know, that to me was not weird. Right. That to me was like, that's what we do. Well, you certainly have done it and done it all as far as guitar goes in the music industry, that's for sure. Well, I mean, there's a lot of guys better, but I'm probably funnier. More <laughs> fun to hang out with. Well, we do appreciate the time that you took to talk with us today, Steve. Thank um, you very much for your time. I'm glad you like the record and we're proud of it. And we'll see you on the road, huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll check out that uh, surprise announcement and, and we'll see where the tour comes. And if it's by us, we'll definitely check it out. I hope we'll be close by. Get sent home.